I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. The Lord is here. I can feel him in my hands. That's too old for some of you. Feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. I feel like I'm at home because I got a lot of Brooklyn up here. I'm from Brownsville, for real. Born, bred, and raised. I'm for real, for real. But I want to slow the pace down a minute so I can give honor to this wonderful brother. We did have the same before people heard of preachers and singers having agents. I didn't know what that was, but we had an agent. And Leonard Moyer from Baltimore took us around the world and never let us meet each other. He put him up first. He'd do his thing. And I mean, he did it. And then he walked by me like he ain't know me. He ain't say hi, he was a kid. Walked by me like, I'm on TV, you ain't. You know, he was on television on Say Amen. And God took us our separate ways and then over 20 years later brought us back and we found out we were still in the same business. Don't need no agent. Jesus is my doctor. He write down all, y'all don't know that, write down all my scriptures. Gave me all my medicine <laughs> in the prayer room. Pilgrim, y'all are blessed because I knew the founder of this wonderful organization, the Honorable Archbishop, who we should still clap for, Roy E. Brown. Oh, come on, you have to do better. Taught me some healthy private lessons that I'm not going to talk about. Everybody brags about who they know. I don't drop names. But I know a lot of people, a lot of people in here tonight that are doing what they're doing and in positions have been uh, doused a little bit by the prophetic mantle on our lives. Whether they say it or not, I knew some of these folk when they were drummers. Now they apostles. I knew them when they were just regular people and now they talk slower. God bless you, heaven. I don't know. I don't know why their voice changed. Y'all ain't talking to me, but uh, as soon as they put on them garbs, they became a whole nother person. Batman don't talk like Bruce Wayne. Y'all know that, don't you? But I want to say you stepped into some big shoes and Anyone that takes on that type of task should for a long time be attacked. And after they overcome all of the befoolery, it means you were chosen for the job. You have to overcome. I don't hear nobody talking. You didn't run for this. This ran to you. And I want to say to you, every since I've known you, you've been consistent in your walk with God. Your display of passion for God is just as wonderful as Archbishop Brown was. Because what you did tonight, he'd have did that too. He just said, stop all that. I mean, but uh, you've got that mantle and you're sitting between two of his best friends and sons who have served him. All that, I don't hear nobody. These three men, I don't hear nobody clapping. I'm, I'm going to preach. This Father, Son, and Holy Ghost triune right here. Somebody's mic is on. But this particular leadership represents who Bishop Roy Brown actually was and still is through them. When I call their names, don't pity Pat, because some of us, 
you know, y'all wouldn't have license, colors, codes, or collars. And some of y'all know your lifestyle ain't changed, but they gave you a chance. It's the truth. All right, prior to that, I was about to give honor, but they provoked the prophetic in me. So I want to tell a story. I want to tell a story. I'm from Brooklyn. That don't mean nothing to any of you, but I'm from the place where if you go to the grocery store, Pathmark or whatever it was when I grew up, and you want chicken, Bishop James Nelson, you go to the poultry section and you get chicken. But my grandmother, she from down south. And every now and then we go down south to spend summer. Can I talk like this with grandma? Because y'all done danced already. Y'all done shouted. Then y'all put the oldest speaker up last. That's real funny, but it's okay with me. Because I'm calling on the spirit of Michael Jordan tonight. Y'all play with me. Listen to me. I went down. Somebody shout glory to God. I'm looking around for somebody. I'll find them when I see them again, but I'm looking around for somebody who God's about to make extremely wealthy. No, no, I know all of us, but I'm looking, I'm looking. Sir, November the 18th, what does that mean to you? Talk to me, you're holding up my speech. It's your birthday? Come here, I want to holler with you a minute. I want to holler with you. I'm down south talking about chickens. Remember that in case I get lost. <laughs> God has been watching you nine, ten years to see how much he could trust you with. God has had to reset you once or twice for whatever reason. But your season begins this August. And if you are wise with this season... You will own a company where stars and movie stars and people from the market will be walking in and out of your door. Y'all too jealous for me to prophesy. Do you, Mahashai, I'm sorry. Do you have a name for your business? What is it? Oh, because I saw BR Productions. I was going to name it for you, but I'll let you do what you want to do. That's what you want to call it? Go ahead. I'm going to have you slowly run up that aisle and come back. When you do, God says you will in the near future have to employ five people. Two will be for the East Coast. Three will be for the West Coast. One of them, hello. One of them, hello. Look at me. One of them is to your right. When you run up the aisle and come back, God says if he praises me in a unique way and not with his charisma or swag, I'll give him the condo too that he asked for. So, y'all know it's not going to come to pass because the instruction was he had to run up the aisle, right? And then when it don't happen, they call me a false prophet when you're a false recipient. You got to follow the rules. I ain't a false prophet, you a false recipient. Look at somebody and say these five words to them. Tell them it shall come to pass. Tell them whatever you believe in God for, it shall come to pass. You may be seated. I'm moving. (sighs) 
where, where my family member is sitting right now, I prophesied that position. Before it was existed, I told him, do A, B, C, and D. And the next time I see you, you will be called A, B, C, and D. Y'all didn't choose him. God chose him. Y'all sanctioned him. When God puts a word on your life, he'll find people who will assist that word. Y'all are not Scoggins. Who's Scoggins? Who's Scoggins? Come here. Hello, young man. How are you? You believe God for blessings? Blessings on blessings? Bless, go ahead, say it, because I like when you're funny. Because I'm old. I ain't used to seeing bishops and things with braids. But come on, give it to me. Y'all used to it. I got one. You see him? Look at that. Now, I ain't used to it. I kill him every day. But I got to move out the way. God is sending... Uh, June the 7th is your birthday, right? I want to say something to you. Now, I know that you're not moved by names because you say people use a cheat sheet called Facebook. But I do want to tell you something, and you were right, I've been doing this before there was a computer. Most folk in here who know me from back then know that, but I don't care. And I do know that all the gifted most of the gifted prophets y'all seeing and invite now work under premonition and prediction. But y'all bring them because you need money. I get it. But once you let strange fire in your house. All right. There's a difference in prophecy, prediction, and premonition. You have to be careful. You're going to get this straight because you're going to start writing books on ministry. You're going to be known as a pristine author prophetically writing under the power of God. Um, are you on the West Coast? All right. Um, then it's going to be a little harder for you because on the West Coast, they live a little more free than we do over here. But God said, somebody in the front row don't like me. I ain't said nothing about you. But you feeling a little shaky since I said they gave you a chance because you ain't changed. They ain't got nothing to do with me. I don't see that. That's God. I don't know you. And I would never point you out because prophecy is not to embarrass. But God will throw a word out there so conviction can settle in your heart. So that that thing doesn't grow into something a little more severe. But I was talking to you while I'm talking to uh, Leon. Leon. While I'm talking to Leon. Jesus did actually, I don't call this a gift. He did use this style. Just want to give it to you. Then you preach it because I watch you every Sunday. Prior to me going to my service, I watch you and your wife every Sunday. Jesus. Every Sunday. Right? But... But listen to this and then high five me if it makes sense, uh, Bishop. And that is, there was a point when Jesus was choosing 12 of his disciples. And he said to one brother, go get Andrew, thy brother. He under the tree. He called him by his name. See, God not only knows your name, he knows where you're at. I don't... And for three folk who are screaming on this, he's about to send something you need straight to your address. Like God is going to California. He's there tonight. He's there right now. Finding you a new piece of property. You're happy, you're satisfied with what you do, but God says the most difficult thing to happen where you are that God's about to do for you if you run up the aisle slowly and back and praise him and we'll help you is God said it's hard to own anything where you are but God said I'm about to put something in your hand with keys you will own it no rent no big no big mortgage for a small building God said I'm about to blow your mind if you run right now in Jesus name y'all helping brother Scoggins
And God used the gift of Gin in the book of Genesis when he said, Adam, where art thou? If God didn't call a name, then I promise you, y'all ain't talking to me. Isaac would have got, died if God didn't say, Abraham, Abraham. The Bible said, those that I fully anoint, I call them by their name. Are y'all with me now? Are we through with that? You can go to your seat, but you can tell somebody watching named New Sin to come. So if there's a new son, you can come out in your blue and white and meet me down here. Sure can. Now you that actually talk negative about the gift that God put in me before you got here and now that God's blessing us and giving us a new life and you enjoy it tonight, don't try to get an appointment. Live off of the premonition. Where's Kimberly? Who's Kimberly? Your wife bring her to. How are the both of you? Great. You love him? So if I told you, because you're not one of these for real, but if I told you I'm going to make the musicians play about 90 seconds of dance music and I want you to dance for him. Would you do that? You don't mind her doing that? Does she dance more than you? Kind of, sort of. <laughs> you said kind of, sort of. Are you happy with the church building that you're in? It's okay. I'm glad you answered like that because I was just talking to Scoggins about another one. Y'all put a lot of money in that building, right? It was a lot of money. I know. No, I said it was a lot of money. You know, we shouldn't put... I'm going to let her dance because let me tell you what God's going to do. He's going to take you because you're a good thinker. You mean no harm. You're business-minded. Y'all talk it through. But sometimes you got to take a leap of faith. You that didn't catch that, you're going to miss. Sometimes you have to like, if you're going to call yourself something about the mountain, then why not live by mountain moving faith? Hold on, let me get out I want you to tell me the truth. Do you ever listen to her? Because she's a prophet. This one right here, you might be the pastor, but that one right there, whether she's dreaming it, whether she's seeing it, she's a prophet. You need to listen. You see the way she's looking? Look at your wife while I'm talking so you can feel it. The closest thing to the Holy Ghost is a woman with intuition. All right, I'm going to leave that alone. Women who are really Holy Ghost filled barely miss it. They don't have to eat up, 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 up. They be like, baby, listen to me. Something ain't right with this right When I play the dancing music, being that you dance a little more than her, you're going to dance with her. As y'all are doing that, God is going to start reallocating money, funds, property. Because he needs to put you where you can be seen and not where you only pick up a certain type of member. God wants to put you where the elite, the educated, the attorneys walk in your building and they're captivated. So... What I'm going to do is we're going to play and any pastor in this section or bishop who needs new property, they're going to dance with you because I can't prophesy to seven more of them. See, I'm not going to do that. So y'all got to get in on this one. If you don't get the whole loaf, you get the crumbs, the same thing. And you others are going to clap and get excited. 
I want to say something to you, Bishop Nelson. I prophesied to you many years ago. Now you're just way up there and you've surpassed me. But I want to say this to you and see if you will have somebody dance for you. When I came in, then I looked at you and I went like this. Hey, Pastor Simmons. And I went like this. I said to God, use somebody else to talk to him. That's what I said. I said, because we know each other. I've already prophesied to him. He's doing well. God said, tell him. I want to give him something that looks like a strip mall. I want to bless his ministry, not through the church, but through the marketplace. I want to touch two white people that actually don't like black people to fall in love with you. All right, y'all don't believe me, do you? God says, and this is not too far from the highway. That's your wife? Yeah, she crying. You got the right one. If I get mad, I want her to cry. I want to know she feel this thing. Then she can put a boutique. Y'all can have a salon. Y'all can have a tax service. Y'all can have a uh, e elementary pre-K type of school. Y'all can keep having. And then you don't have to do anything but pastor. Nothing else. Because God said, the time for you two to enjoy each other has come. God says, I will not take her through the wilderness that I just brought her out of. Y'all not talking. God said, I will not take her for another walk through the desert. All right, at the count of three, y'all going to play, y'all going to dance. Somebody going to dance for him or with him. They're going to get that seven more pastors in here going to dance for your property. Maybe by the end of September, October, you'll have the keys. The rest of you are going to clap. We're going to have 90 second church. Let's go. One. Let's go. Where's your hand? talking about I don't need church property but if you need a financial breakthrough it's in your feet for the next 20 seconds and if you miss the opportunity shame on you one two
through church just one time? Put your hands on it right there. Let's go. to go to my scripture be seated thanking God for his grace thanking God for the first assistant presider Bishop Shorts thanking God for second presiding Bishop Bishop Hopkins thank God for the entire presidium and all of their wives and first ladies and the national first lady of pilgrim thanking God for everyone Will you do me a favor and clap for the success of your neighbor that's sitting next to you? When it's God, you don't need that music. It's in your soul now. Woo! Shout number. So by number ho. Somebody's touching the hem of his garment right now. And whatever's been hemorrhaging in your life, it's about to stop. you may be seated thank you Jesus you ought to tell him thank you I know you're hot but you won't get sweaty by telling him thank you The Lord is in this holy temple. And I know I sound old, but whatever you need is in the room. 
The old mother said, you can have it. Reach up and grab it. All you have to do is show God how bad you want it. I want you to be seated if you can and get your Bibles. Give me a few minutes to refamiliarize some of you with the story that you should know backwards and forward. I'm only reading this scripture because there's some Ahashia. There's something new that I found out. And I just want to leave you with something user-friendly. You've had some of the greatest preachers for real this week. And I don't feel in my age and in my wisdom that I need to come behind them to try to preach a better sermon. All I need to do is leave you with something good. Preaching is becoming a competition People are practicing their styles. I don't know how to do that. I got new musicians. They said, you want us to create your hoop? I said, you better create your help. I'm too old for that. I just feel it. And when I feel it, I run with it. Proverbs 29, just to use this verse. I need to use this verse. Now, what you do not know, Reverend Dr. Bishop, and I'm going to be walking like white people do, is that I was in the office with my vice bishop and my adjutant, and I said, I need my sermon to be confirmed. I then turned the service on to see where y'all were in the service, and you were saying, by the Spirit of God for three people, open their eyes. You said, Pilgrim, we need God to give you another vision, more vision, Lord, more vision. I almost danced in that office. Almost tore it up. Then I remembered this was Bishop William Murphy's church, so I had to remember that I, I, I'm not going to break it up. But Proverbs 29, 18 is my base. Where there is no vision. Can I get 10 of y'all tonight? I done prophesied I was nice. The only person I left out who's going to be a millionaire was somebody named Kentra Jackson. That was... Oh. I'm sorry, I'll get with you. I was just saying it. I didn't know who it was, but that's you? It is Okay, I'll be back. Let me finish this sermon. Where there is... Woo. Y'all should have known I was coming to that section because I pointed at y'all. I can't see that far without my glasses, but God has you on his agenda. Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy... Is he where there is no vision the people perish now I need to say something to 10 of you who are listening to me in order for you to hear a vision you need a visionary and y'all won't jump on this the members the congregants those who come together every Sunday or whatever your worship service is the fruitfulness of your life is based upon the visionary speech. 
we must ask God to increase the vision of the leaders because the oil drips not from the ankles up. Come on, talk to me, but from... See, if y'all help me preach, I'll just come right through. But from the head down. And how can they hear without a preacher? How can he or she, y'all ain't talking to me, including the presidency, how can they preach? Oh, y'all didn't catch that, did you? Except men look in the refrigerator, they announce there's no food, a woman go in there and come out with a meal. And that's what's about to happen for America. Men going there. We need somebody with a vision. I didn't say who it is, but we need someone. I see some of y'all who've been stuck on prophets that keep on cheering certain people. But God's going to give us what's best for us. He's not giving us someone to prove we are prophet. He's giving us someone to turn the nation back to God. I told my church, I ain't ashamed to say it because y'all think I'm crazy, but tell you need to talk to me. I told them last year, 2024, not in presidency or etc., is the year of the woman. And certain men won't say amen because you like controlling them, but every now and then, you got to let them do what they do because if it wasn't for prophetess Deborah, Barack would have been killed. You know, you got to, if it wasn't for Ruth and Naomi, y'all ain't talking to me, and Tamar and Rahab, there would be no Jesus. Every now and then, we got to do our roles, men. We got to raise what they carry. All right, now let me come back. It's still yours, but let her carry it. Where there's no vision, I'm sorry, what was I talking about? Where there's no vision. And I hear someone over here, I won't point at you because prophecy is not to uncover, it's not to embarrass, because what you're saying to my right is... uh, is she saved or not? I wouldn't even, my sermon's not about it, but being that you keep testing God, right? And then you're talking about the other president or running or person that's nominated being saved because you met him, but you didn't meet her. All I know is this. I'm talking about leaders with a vision helping people's lives not deteriorate. Please catch this and then I'm gonna leave this alone. One president that's running, who I believe you're saved, if you say you're saved, we have not met your pastor. The other one had their pastor on the other day. Who you hearing from God from? And where does your tithe? All right, let me leave that alone. Well, uh oh, now it's quiet. People, see, y'all, all this premonition is gonna kill the church. When a person is of God, they walk the walk of the scripture. That's the bottom line. Yes, the prophecies are pure. Yes, they are powerful. Can I get five people? Yes, they may be correct. But if you put pure water in a dirty glass, you gonna drink it? Ain't nothing wrong with the water, something wrong with the vessels. I'm from Brownsville. Never ran. You better trust God on that right there. Where there's no vision, people perish. Oh, we're going to have a good time right here. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. You're going to need a shop in California. You're going to need a shop in Detroit. You're going to need a shop in New York because you're going to be styling from head to toe movie stars, preachers. Uh, I, uh, something about North Carolina. Where are you from? Born in North Carolina. Amen. Jacksonville? All right. I want to say this to you because they're getting on my nerve. What I want to say to you, right? 
is whatever you need, God says, write it on paper. And in 38 days, he's going to start bringing it to pass. And somebody that believes God for Sister Jackson or whatever the name is, shout amen. So in Mark chapter 10, I'm almost there. Turn to Mark chapter 10, verse 46 through 52. Bishop Murphy, then you can preach with me. I had to find a client who was perishing because of lack of vision. I wish I had preachers talking. Because it's funny that when y'all get a mic, y'all loud, but when you don't have one, you get quiet. I just... Scripture needs a client. For the scriptures to come alive, they need someone to get into. So if God writes, I shall supply all your needs, he has to find people who need their needs supplied. Look at somebody and if they don't move, don't talk to them for 20 minutes and I mean it. Tell them you are the fulfillment of scripture. And the Bible said, Jesus said, lo I come in the volume. Then it said, the word became flesh. The reason why you're going through hell is so people can see how good God really is. You don't know, but your life is nothing but a scripture fulfilled. God can't lie so you can't fail. Will you tell someone that God can't lie so you can fail? Why? Because you're a product of his word. You've read this before, Mark 10, 46, I only need 32 more minutes, verse 50, 46 to 52. They came to Jericho, and as they went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by, I hear somebody in the front, we heard this before, just stay with me, sat by the highway side doing what? Look at somebody and tell them, I ain't begging after this day. I'm not begging after this day. Tell them, I'm going to be in a place where people are going to ask me for something. Tell him, I'm not on the asking in anymore. I am about to become the lender. I'm prophesying, not the borrower. And when I bless you, I don't want it back. Because I'm about to bless you from a place where it doesn't hurt me to bless you. See, God wants to give some of us more than enough so that we can be a blessing. You're never going to be. And let me preach in the form of a rebuke style and I'll come out friendly. You will never, ever be multimillionaires as people keep telling you, you have more than enough, you're going to the third dimension, whatever cliche we have been taught to use. You will never receive that more than enough, exceeding abundantly above all, well, you know, whatever they tell you that, that, that excites you. I'm going to see who screams, unless you have people in mind you want to bless when you get there. And it has to be folk outside of your family. Thank you, sir. Thank you. This ain't about you and your immediate family getting all the money. That money got to go somewhere else too. God is interviewing most of you tonight because he's about to give you such a vision I'm going to see who screams that you're going to become a pro at that vision and you're going to become provision. Y'all follow? When you know how to work that vision, you become a pro and then people see you as provision. So when the scripture says a scripture is nothing but God's word in flesh being come into pass. One person scream after this. So therefore when it says God shall supply all my needs and there are people waiting on God to do it. He's got to put an overabundance in somebody so that when you bless that person they say thank God. Y'all ain't, you know, you don't want them to thank you. You want God to trust you and them to thank him. And beggars can't be blessings. Be seated.
I feel glory. I got a word for you in a minute, but I feel glory. When he heard that it was Jesus, somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. No, no, don't have shout. Shout that name real loud. Because for about 12 years, everybody was screaming, money! What about Jesus? Why do we dance longer on the word million than we do Savior? We seek first. Don't worry, I ain't gonna be long. I'm serious. The kingdom of God, y'all not gonna talk, and his righteousness. All these things shall be added unto thee. Look at the behavior of a blind man when he hears about someone he's never seen. Never met him, never touched him, never seen him. But what happens that makes him get sight, which can then again become vision, all I need is 10 out of thousands, is the behavior he's going to have from hearing. Now faith don't come by seeing. Faith don't come by touching. Faith comes by how you act when you hear something. You can't have faith and not be excited. Some of y'all ain't got faith, you got hope. Y'all ain't talking to me. But when God gives you a vision, that's not by sight. Vision is internal. And then as you keep praising God externally, what's inside starts appearing on the outside. Oh, y'all, y'all not. Every time you praise God for what's in your spirit, God start touching people outside of your spirit to make that vision visible. Let me quote a scripture out of context for three folk who will jump. And ye shall live in houses that you did not build. Now, I didn't get that till I studied it this afternoon for my 18 millionaires and I'm number one, two or three. And that is, when he said live in houses you haven't built, the only way you want to live in a house you haven't built is God put your specifications in the builder. Oh, y'all didn't care. He's not going to put you in something that's haphazard and not well. God is putting in your enemies the architectural design for your future. That's why he said, don't hate an enemy, don't avoid an enemy, because I prepared the table for you in the presence of your enemy. And some of y'all won't scream, but your enemy is your economy. I'm almost there. If you chase them away, you chase away the money. Y'all ain't going to say amen. Bishop, prove it. He said the wealth of the wicked. You got to learn how to behave in a hostile environment. Hawkins said it better. I feel help on this side now. I don't wait till the battle's over, till the bills are paid, till the doctor says you're doing better. I praise him before then because I saw it before he announced it. Y'all, I saw it. You prayed for someone early. I'm going to be preaching prophesying. You prayed for someone early. It was somebody getting a paper or license and you got overwhelmed with the power to heal. And you said, heal him, heal him. Who was it? You said, heal him, heal him. Who was it? You said, heal him, heal him. Who was it? Because he ain't identifying himself, so he must not know it was him. Who was it? Stand up. I said, who was it? And the Lord told me in the office, he had a few months to live before he goes to the ICU. But God said, but if he prays him the night, on your word God said I will heal that boy from the crown of his head you ain't got to dance to the sole of your feet because the devil's after you because you are the preacher for the next generation I'm sorry when he heard that it was Jesus of Rabba Kushi Baha when he heard that he Oshki Baha be seated when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. He began to cry out. I wish I'd help. Jesus. I want somebody to shout his name as loud as you can. Jesus. Jesus. 
And if you call Jesus, he will answer prayer. I tried him and I know him. I found him to be a friend. I know too much about him. On him I can depend. Save my soul, made me whole. There's none like him. I got saved not by confessing sin only, but by calling one name for about an hour. I had them praying, mother. They said, call him, baby. Call him louder. Call him faster. Y'all get saved cute. Then you got to get saved again. But if you get saved the right way, you ain't got to come back up here to try to find what you lost. We called him for hours. And we heard songs for three millionaires, Jesus on the main line. Will you believe this and then you preach? I said I was going to preach simple gospel. Every time you call him, you call everything you're asking him for. He don't want you to call him and then say, I need a house. Just call him. Because house is in him. Y'all ain't, oh, y'all, you ain't got to mention Jesus, I need a husband. Just call him. A husband is in him. Y'all. You never met God. None of us have ever met Yahweh. None of us have ever met Elohim. But for two screamers, then you can sit. Jesus tried to teach us in the Bible. He says, whatever you need is in the name that you call. So he said, if you want to meet God when you see me, you see the Father. What do folks see when they hear you? He cried out, I got to act it out, and said, Jesus, thou son of David. If you call Jesus too loud in the church now, they think you got a demon. Quiet is worship now, but when I grew up, if somebody broke up, oh, that was the Holy Ghost moving. Now we do that, i uh, sit them down, tell the ushers, put them out. Why are you putting the glory out your church? You afraid that somebody knows who God is? And many, verse 48, many in the 21st century, Bishop Hopkins, thank you for pushing me. Many charged him. They said, hold your peace. Shut up. And when they told the blind man to be quiet, he got louder. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you, and they should have told you to your left and your right, because they know whose place you're sitting in. If that man was not just a great preacher. That man was a praiser. And that man was loud. When it got good, he said, "Ah, ah, ah." when it got real good to him, down in this song, "Ah, ah, call them. Some of y'all ain't got his oil, you just got his position. But you got to learn that one thing Bishop Roy Brown will tell you is God is in the building. And when Jesus is in the building, him and Archbishop Wilbur McKinley, they would do a thing called Shabbat or Barak or Tehillah or Zamara. They knew the only way to stop God from leaving the premises is what you had to hold them hostage with a holler and let me tell you a preacher that's not a real praiser is a perpetrator now I want to go back here some of you just learned how to preach but you are not an authentic worshiper They charged him, hold, I feel my Noel Jones coming, your peace. And when they told him, the Bible said, he got louder and cried out in another volume, thou son of David. See, if you're going to preach it, act it. mercy on me (laughs) 
Verse 49 is the results of what came out of his mouth and the sound that he made. Then I'll take one more scripture, braid the hair, and we can go. But 50 of you catch this. If Jesus did not like the noise and the sound, he'd have kept going where he was going. But it says Jesus stood still. Not only did he stand still for screamers, he made who was screaming be called to him. Yeah. And the Lord said, all of you loud praises, we got an appointment. We need to talk about something. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. For 320 of you, I think it's 320, 322, because I don't call numbers. But the Lord said, according to your voice, God says, we will meet as soon as you get back to where you live and we'll have answers 48 hours later. We're going to meet. You can stop now. Now notice, it can't be demonic because over all that noise, you heard me say, you can stop now. And you did. That's called as the spirit gives utterance. That means your sound is controllable. Silence is not. Let me get off the script again, then come back and be a little Baptist in a minute for the 300 people who will catch this. Paul and Silas praised God loud at midnight and they got out of jail. You still in it because you're Paul, but the other person is silence. Now, God didn't say Paul and silence. And if you catch this and scream, you'll know I'm playing, but I'm serious. Preaching got them in it, but only a praise got them out. It's very important that some of y'all still on preaching while you behind bars, while your money's locked up, while you're losing your marriage. But somebody in here, I want my cake and I want to eat it too. we have great ministry and great marriages can't we have everything everything and I'm saying something under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost now this I, this is not on my paper but the Lord just said to tell those who will scream for 30 more seconds if you praise me right tonight you will not see going through hell for the next two years God says I'm going to show you if you can go through hell 20 years, why can't you have a good season for two? Bills paid on time, children obedient, marriages full of love, bodies totally healed. Why can't we have it all? Be seated. Let me roll this and get it done. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Jesus commanded him to be called. They called the blind man. He's still blind, but he's got an appointment. He's still blind, but he has an appointment. Ain't nothing changed. Except, don't let her be quiet. Don't you dare mess with that screamer. She ain't bothering me. He got an appointment. Then he said, be of good comfort. Now, Bishop, you and I can talk again. Me, you, and the Presidium. The same people that told him shut up is now acting like they gave him the appointment. My God, my God. Preach. Hold on, as long as Jesus ain't talk about him, be quiet, be quiet, he got louder. Once Jesus said, bring him, come on. Now, how you don't wanna be my friend before you hear the announcement of my season? Oh, y'all, if I say this and this side don't jump, I fail. Some of you don't know, the past four years, God was getting, a, he, he, was, he was taking fake relationships out of your life. 
and you felt like me, lonely, misunderstood, frustrated, used by everybody. But wait till you see what happens after. The Bible says they told him, rise, go. He commanded you. But here's the problem now, Posh. They didn't take him. Mm. They just told him go. Because they wanted to see, could he get there without sight? He He got there. I had to find out, Reverend Doctor, a preacher, how he got there without tampering with the text and making it so isogetical and hypothetical from my imagination that people call me nuts. So I found out how he got there. You ready? I could be blind, but blind people, when they lose one sense, their other senses heighten. I thought I had help, but I... The only section I ain't gonna mess with is these first eight rows full of first ladies. I ain't bothering none of them. Cause we might have a first lady later on. So I ain't bothering no first ladies. They said he calls you, but they also know what his deficiency is. He cannot see. So the only way blind people can see or get somewhere without seeing, I hope you catch this and get happy with me, is you, Jesus, that's calling me, keep calling for Todd. Keep screaming my name. What I'm doing, keep calling, is I am following sound. Oh, hold on. Some people are mad at you because they don't know how you got there. I kept my ear to that voice. Y'all ain't talking. I didn't let your voice interfere with what God already told me. And I'm standing on the word of God. I'm going to preach you. I'm going to give you the mic too. He casting away. Come on, y'all. Give me five friendly people who really want to be blessed to be consistent for the next 20 minutes and catch this. You need to give yourself credit because you don't know how you making it. And what's real crazy is folk are jealous of you and you don't even know what really they're jealous of. Let me tell you, your praise showed your enemy your future before it showed it to you. Hey. Hey. I'm preaching. Your haters hate your sound. He casting away his garments, Bishop Jacobs, rose, and he came, not was led, he came, not was led, not brought, he came to Jesus. Jesus said to him, now that you're here, what you want me to do for you? He's still blind, but he's holding a conversation with Jesus. He said... Yeah, that thou might, that I might, which means if you feel it's better that I serve you blind, leave me in this condition. But if you're giving me the option, if you know I'm going to get in something worse when I start seeing, you override my request. Oh, I can't. But if you know, that I can serve you with sight. I need it. Jesus said to him in verse 52, then one more scripture. He says, and I hope y'all push me on this because I'll prove it in about 10 minutes. It is not my power that healed you. 
I didn't lay hands on you. I didn't spit on the ground like I did a man who was born blind. I didn't make dirt out of clay or clay out of dirt. Put it on your eyes. Uh, he said, your faith. And I'm going to prove this. And I need more than five of you being nice. Anyone that made it here and really you didn't have the budget, wait till you get back home. Your faith. You came here on a wing in the prayer. You was like, Father, I hope somebody got an extra bed. This ain't packed because folk got money. This is packed because they're running after Jesus. They believe Pilgrim has vision. Jesus tells him, go thy way, thy faith has made you whole. And here's where you scream, then I read one more scripture and I read two paragraphs and I'm done. Immediately. Not immediately he got his sight, I'm going to see you scream, immediately after the conversation. Let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him, y'all ain't old school, all about our troubles. He'll hear our faithful cry. You got to be old school. He'll answer by and by. Get a little prayer wheel turning. Oh, that fire burning. Just another talk with Jesus. He gets his sight after he gets his conversation. Immediately he received not sight. The Bible says, see what I liked about Archbishop Brown and Archbishop Wilbert Sterling McKinley is when they taught, they made sure that you understood what the text is saying. Y'all know how to preach it, you don't know how to say it. Because little words change things. If I do this, the first 10 that catch it for real and scream, may your mortgages get erased. Catch this. And listen, that is possible because when the glitch happened to Microsoft, we don't know what got erased, deleted, or added. Some of you, I didn't get upset. I couldn't fly a plane, so I rode a train. When you've never had a thing before in your life, you cannot actually claim it. So when the man who was born blind in John chapter 9 was born blind, the Bible said he received sight. He said sight because he never had it when he was born. This man could see before. That's why he said his sight. Oh, yeah, you miss it. Some of you are about to get back what you lost. But God wanted to see how you would live without it. Y'all need to, how can you? Oh. <laughs> and God took the most important thing you thought you needed to make it in life. The ability to see. The ability to see. Yeah, he followed him, but... Matthew 20, verse 29 through 34, then I'm a holler, and then you come stand near me, and you can have your church back. And as they departed from Jericho, I'm about to run. Help me, Bishop Jacobs, then you can get the mic. A great multitude followed him. Behold, now this is the same day, same scripture, same Jesus, same condition, same highlighted group. I'm going to see who screams in front of me. Same day, but... Mark saw one man blind who was related to Timaeus, so they called him Bartimaeus. But when Matthew writes the story, he sees two. There were two blind men sitting by the wayside. And when they, y'all ain't heard that Jesus passed by, cried out saying, have mercy not on me, us. Oh, y'all quiet. O oh Lord, thou son of David, and the multitude rebuked them. 
preach because they should hold their peace. And they, y'all don't like that I'm screaming? Every time I scream, I get another bill paid. I don't know what you get. Them, as a matter of fact, I got to be honest, I ain't got no bills. I don't sell no books. I don't travel with no product. I have not did any projects. I've not been in any movies. I don't know how I got here. They cried out the more saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still. Exact same story. And somebody said, this was probably an added person to the first person. I saw how you got there because that's how I got there till I had to make it make biblical sense. Bishop, on these two verses, would you come tap me on the shoulder so I can get some strength? Jesus stood still, called them and said, what will you have that I do unto you? They said to him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. Y'all don't hear me. That's different than just sight. I get it, but that our eyes may be opened. Jesus had compassion on them. I'm going to see who screamed, which means this ain't the same man in Mark, even though it's the same day, same street. Because that man in Mark didn't get touched. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. Did not get a prayer. But in this, he touched their eyes. Immediately their eyes received sight and followed him. Let me just give you the topic then read my two paragraphs because y'all threw with me on this last night. But ten of you got to jump out of a thousand or more of you that's excited about your future. And that is this. The Bible simply says that when Jesus came to Jericho in the book of Mark, there was a man named Bartimaeus. But what you missed, and I made you miss it because you think you know everything, and when you think you know everything, you miss everything. So what you missed was, uh, he heard Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus started it when Jesus came in. But Matthew saw too as they departed. Let me throw that back to you again. When they were coming into Jericho, there was a man named Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus started a system of screaming that got him his sight. About time others heard that he got sight by using sound. Oh, y'all don't hear me. They, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know, it's in there. You don't want to read it, but it's in there. Hey there, Myron, but it's in there. About time they heard the word got down the block. Your rumor travels quicker than you. Jealousy, hatred, lies travel quicker than you. So somebody heard Bartimaeus was, Hi, Jesus! The Bible said he cried, Jesus. He didn't cry, give me sight. He just kept calling name, Jesus! You know, y'all ain't gonna do that no more. Jesus! And then somebody heard he received sight. So about time Jesus is walking out, the Bible said, and he departing out of Jericho, two people heard it and said, let's see if this works. So they started yelling on his way out. Jesus! He said, uh-huh, you done found out something, didn't you? So my topic for 30 of you who need a miracle is either get it coming or going. Now, I don't know which way you're going to get it. You didn't scream coming in here, but you better yell before you get out of here. Don't get jealous that we get it. Do what we did to get what we have. I don't believe in all that screaming. Why not? You scream on a roller coaster. You scream at an amusement park. You scream at a sports game. Why you only bring silence to the house of God? He's not exciting enough. He has not taken you for the ride of your life. There's a show on TV, and after this bishop, we're going to a hoop. There was a show on TV that still comes on every now and then. If 50 of you catch it, I know you're prophetic. It's called The Voice. Good God Almighty. The Voice. I know you only watch TBN and Word Network, but it's called, it's called The Voice. Here's the objective, and I'll see if you catch it without me having to preach it. There are people that are gifted that will have opportunity to see their gift explode and go national. But they got to make somebody in a seat with his back turned from them. 
hear something without seeing something. Y'all, oh, oh, oh y'all quiet. And right now, God's back might be towards you. But no matter which way you turn, his ears are in the same. God on. If God had to look on any of us, we would get nothing from it. Because our righteousness is as filthy rags. But God says, I incline my ear. Then he said, if you call me, I'll answer. Make a joyful. Let me hear a B flat. Yeah, make a. Make a joyful noise. Not make sense, make noise. I said, not make sense. Make noise. But that noise has to be accommodated by an emotion. Joy. For three folks still using it, weeping may endure for a night. Y'all finish it, but joy. I'm not there, but joy. Joy. It comes in the morning four chairs are sitting they cannot turn around Myron should be on that show Myron Williams but when professionals hear the potential of next their ears have to hear something that says they deserve to go higher the person that is auditioning for next level living, can I call it that? Talk to me. They also, you ain't gonna scream in this, have a certain time to make that chair turn. And I'm gonna say this to 200 screamers, if you don't do it tonight, it ain't coming back around because... Now, you may not know it, I know if Archbishop could see us, that's his sound. I, this I know for sure. One last thing and I'm done. Sound travel. When you say hallelujah, it never stops saying hallelujah. When I'm a shundo, can't get help. When God uses a man or woman of God or a true vessel of God to prophesy your future and enlighten you to things that are to come, they might say something like, in four months, God is going to make you debt free, right? Here's what happens. I'm going to see who uses it. You're supposed to get excited about the conversation the time you hear it, right? Once you be like, thank you, God, for it, and it's still four months away. That thank you done went four months ahead of you, right? Your sound got there before you. And your sound validated what was spoken to you today. That's why we said you can get it immediately. Based upon how long it takes you to respond. I'm about to close now. I am. The man, before he goes to Jesus, I'm done. The man, before he goes to Jesus, he has to do one more thing. Ask me what it is. Because if you don't talk, ain't no need for me to help you. The man has to pull off his garments. If this side catches it, not going to mess with this, but y'all over there and y'all right here. If y'all understand this, you'll be blessed. Begging was a legal job as long as you had on the right garments. It is like a handicapped parking decal. 
If you park where you don't have a license to park, you get fined. So they had a place where you wore a certain garment that then told everybody you have the right to be on that block begging. This man does not have sight. He don't know he's going to get sight. I'm going to see you scream. But on his way to Jesus, he does something, which is my subtopic. And I'm hoping 3,000 of you yell quit. He decides before he gets sight to quit his job. Y'all ain't talking. He said, hold on. He announces by faith, that's why his faith made him whole, that I don't care. Once I get to Jesus, I ain't going back to that job. Y'all ain't talking. I can't help nobody begging. I can't be a beggar after I touch Jesus. I know God's going to do something for me tonight. Y'all ain't talking because I'm not going home the same way that I came. If I do that, I look ignorant. I look foolish. So Jesus, I made it to Atlanta. I want to tell you, I need something to take back home. Be flat. I'll be there. He takes off his working clothes. He goes to Jesus for three folk who scream, unemployed. He go to Jesus now, not just seeing, but not seeing how he gonna pay his bills. Oh, yeah. Bishop Crow, he 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 has prematurely quit. I'm going to do this for the last time. 200 of you for real now. We're not playing anymore. We're going to God. I need you to know that you've been going through all this hell. You're not ungrateful. You know that you work. You are not lazy, but you're not getting what you're worth. And the government is eating it all up. God said, the only way I can bless you to, to literally make you a blessing, I got to, I have to empower you and give you enough where you can say I quit. Y'all ain't talking. Just look at somebody. Uh -uh. I can't do this for eight and 12 hours and only come out with this. I need God to put his hand in my story. And God said, I'll put my hand in it when you put your mouth on it. Y'all ain't talking. God said, I tell you what, the more you talk to me, the more I'll go to work for you. But I'm telling you, you don't leave that loud voice in the club. You don't elevate that voice just for an argument. You got to do it as a habit to just tell God, thank you. Woo. When life struggles come your way, hold your head up. I'm preaching to one side now, high and set. Hallelujah. I heard it. I heard it. Anyhow, some of y'all were too afraid. Hallelujah. See, you got to get over that foolishness. Because y'all live miles away, you got to make sure your sound get home before you do. Watch it. He goes to Jesus. Unemployed. And blind. But when oh, he gets to Jesus, they have a conversation. Why don't y'all help me preach and look up towards heaven, which is that way, and repeat after me, say, Lord, I need a miracle from your hand. He starts crying out to Jesus. Jesus. People start telling him, be quiet. He gets a little louder and calls Jesus. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor you've got every right. To scream as loud as you want tonight. Because by tomorrow, God 
is about to give you the desires of your heart. I came to Jesus just as I was weary, worn, sad. Y'all preach the rest of it, but I found in him a resting place. He has made me glad. Now remember, Bartimaeus was in it by himself. But if you can get a double for your trouble, find somebody who will talk with you and get excited for you and say, neighbor, show me the kind of praise that you would give God if by tomorrow morning all your bills were paid all your children say body totally healed burdens lifted tears dry heart fixed mind made up show me the sound of praise that you would give God if he did it by the morning the wine and said to wear it what the night is going to bring God said it'll be all over in the morning shake a neighbor's hand and look them in the face shake them like you're excited and say oh neighbor congratulations on surviving the worst scene If y'all ain't happy, get out that person's face. And I was sad, but I found in him. I said I found in him. Shake a neighbor and say, guess what? One part of your vision just opened up and it said paid. Tell him the next eye is going to open up. Say in full about time both of your eyes open up like they should. You're gonna find out every bill you have, every burden on your shoulder, just lift it up off you because God's not dead, He's still alive. somebody away and say neighbor don't come back over here without your voice tell them I got about 30 seconds to make that chair turn around I know God's gonna bless me but he's not turning around yet but when he hears you call his name and you call it real loud praise stops him from walking praise paralyzes him in his steps Praise say you can't go nowhere till you bless me. And I want to tell Jesus any way you bless me, Lord. He's a mighty good God. 
scream and shout it's done if the other side acts right God said I'm gonna bless both sides but don't say it for your neighbor to hear you say it for somebody somewhere far to hear you and just shout across the room it is done hey ah, Lord yeah yeah you ought to tell somebody it is Thou has taught me to say. I'm tired of y'all playing. Only those who know your life is going to change by August. You got to give God and tell 10 people as loud as you can. It is well. I said 10 people. It is well. It is well. You ought to shake a neighbor's hand. a river attended I feel something we're closing my way when sorrow like sea billow roll whatever when the devil tell you ain't none of this mess gonna happen look at the devil and tell him whatever Whatever my lot thou hast taught, hold that music, Sean, me to say, it is well. It is a mashondai. It is a so kotara. It is well. This is how I want to close. Look at me. Bishop, thank you, but I'm going to bring this in. The boy gets to Jesus. He no longer goes back to the place of begging. God has given him enough sight that he can fulfill his vision. Yes, yes. He can find out through sight and perception and discernment who to hire. He probably opened a business with the other two fellas. He probably became a sound man. Hey. <laughs> you didn't catch it. Because when you think about sound man, you think about sound systems. When you should be the system of sound. I don't need a mic for him to hear me. I called on the Lord. Come on, Wicko, and he heard me. God's ear is inclined to your voice. Now look at me. Hold someone's hand, but be careful whose hand you hold. You weren't careful. That's too fast for me. That's how they caught COVID last year, the year before. You're just too quick. Who you touch can determine how fast you get what you need. God is going to give some of you a huge overflowing blessing. Listen to me from one scream and nobody else because Bartimaeus started what others picked up. When you are a trendsetter, when you do it until folk have to do it, y'all ain't... They'll laugh at you for the first year until you start buying things, paying off things. Then they ask you, what did you do? I did what you laughed at. 
I'm going to say it again. I did what you laughed at. This is how I want to close this. I was not as close with Archbishop Brown as some of you would know. I knew him through Bishop F.D. Washington. I was Bishop F.D. Washington's driver. See, folk back home think they know everything. I was his next door neighbor. My mother Yvonne Hall was his wife's business partner. And one day he had me drive him to meet Bishop Brown. We drove to the church. Adjutants back then had to be seen, not heard. Listen. So I walked into the room that they supposedly told me the story that Bishop Brown got the Holy Ghost through Bishop F.D. Washington. Now that's the story I heard. I don't know what y'all heard. True? I'll take your word. I walked into the office. These two giants was talking. Bishop Brown looked at me and he was then had a mother of his church who was related to my members. Her name was Mother Arrington. Yeah. And he said to me, what you got this boy driving you for, Washington? He said, he can be trusted. He said, the boy can preach. Because I was a part of Bougie Church, he said, but the boy don't praise. And I wanted to talk, because I'm from Brooklyn, but the adjutant in me was supposed to be seen. Y'all are missing the story. I'm supposed to be seen, not heard. They're discussing me. And folk from New York, no, we don't let you talk to us like that. But that's fine. Y'all going to let me. You don't care who it is. I don't care who it is. And we was like, you going to like say that while I'm standing right here? He said to me, are you a praiser? I said, well, from what I know, and I was, but I was a praiser according to the church I came out of. My praise was in my feet, and we called it shouting. That's good. When shouting is with the mouth, not with the feet. So the devil took praise and took it from his highest place. Oh, yeah. And put it down at his lowest place. And make you think you doing something good for God. That's called dancing. That's right. And with those two giants, Bishop Hopkins talking to me, I got lost in the conversation because I'm intelligent, so I got lost. I got real quiet. And uh, Bishop McKinley said, no, that's called dancing. And up there, that's called shout. So Bishop Brown had four glasses of China that he spent a lot of money for. And he said to me, I'm going to teach you a lesson. Never forgot the lesson. It was the only one that he taught me. He said, break that glass for me. I'm intelligent. First thing I said, if you hear me, I'm prophesying. I said, do I have to pay for it? Because I'm doing it at your word. All right, hold on. Some of you are about to get something and you ain't going to have to pay for it. See how you're missing it? Because you haven't been in these conversations. You don't know how to interpret where I'm going. I took it by the stem and I threw it on the floor. He said, success. I said, yep, and I'm not paying for it. He said, now take the second glass and break it without it leaving your hand. The next level of breaking for screamers caused me to think more. Because the first break was as simple as letting it go. Yo, I'm about to get it out of here. Some of you rather take the let it go way. But what do you do when God says hold on to it? I started thinking, prophet. All I got to do now is use the edge, because you have to think more, of this little table and bang it. So I used the edge, cracked it, and still had the stem in my hand as proof that I obeyed. Oh, yeah. He said, you're smart. And Bill said, yes. He wouldn't be smart. He said, he got to be smart because Bishop Washington letting him drive. And these giants are talking about me and my face. I had to stem. 
He said, I only got two glasses left. Take the third glass, Todd, and break it and don't hit it against nothing. Don't drop it. I'm going to see who told. He said, that took another level of thinking. Yeah, forget this side. And a level of fear came in. Because now if I got power to crush it, crushing it will also cut me. Oh, yeah. And some of y'all got some folk you can crush. But God said, if you do that, it's going to turn against you. Everything I have broken was a vessel. Dropped it. Used some apparatus. I said, uh, I don't think I can do it. He said, oh, you, you can do it. You don't want to do it. Because now there's some type of hurt that could happen to you. He said, get a towel and wrap the glass up in the towel. Now I'm teachable. Y'all miss it. He said, wrap it up. Break it. And I did. Completed the third level, but not without help. I got more help over here than I do over there. This is it, Bishop Murphy. The last glass, Bishop Jacobs. You can preach it better than me, and I'm watching you all the time. The last glass... He says, use nothing, use no physical power, use no towel, use no side of any furniture, and keep it in your hand and break it. I completely looked at all three men, and I said, I can't. Sometimes you don't get help until you admit That's right. That's right. That's right. you can't. All right, I don't hit, see, it's too hard for you to clap there. Because you don't, because you take the words I can't to translate I'm weak. I'm unable. I couldn't do it. Now, I don't know if you knew this, but they would have to know it. Because only people who grew up around him would know what I'm about to say. You would not know this. He looked at me and he looked at Bishop M M McKinley and they looked at Bishop Washington who they were giving a package to. And said, before your guy drives you, tell him break the last glass. Bishop Watson said, Hall. I said, uh -uh, Bishop. I can't. Bishop Bill McKinley said, you can, but you don't know how. Bishop Brown just flat out, he just straight talked. He can't. I thought and I thought and I thought and I thought and I said I can't. I said, well, I've learned a few lessons today and I appreciate you because you're supposed to be seen, not heard. And I'm walking out the door. Bishop Brown said, come in here. He said, you done broke three of my glasses. This is a perfect set. I need you to crack this last one too. I said, I can't. He said, now I'm going to tell you something. Now, I don't know. Only Dr. Crow would know this, bishops and those who were close. I never knew, and I'm gonna see if two people hear me, that he ever was an opera singer. Oh. Look at the rest. Y'all gotta look at your path. He, I never, oh, y'all, oh, y'all know? So, 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 I'm, so I'm still safe? He's an opera singer. And I said, why don't you do it? He said, it's easy. He said, pick up that glass and hold it away from your face. And I held it away from my face. And he taught me a lesson I'll never forget. I'm going to see if 100 you scream. He just looked at me. He said, Whoa! and he said, pow. I said, oh, Lord Jesus. He said, until your voice can shatter, what's stopping you from what you, some of you. He went from that. Whoa! You got to hit the right pitch. That's how bad credit shatters. That's how divorce shatters. Cancer shatters. High blood pressure shatters. So at the count of three, we're going to do it for 30 seconds. 
I wanted to tell you, stand up, that there's two blocks of brownstone buildings that God wants to trust you with. This is not a church. This is a community development. God says, tell him, I'll give him the membership back for church, but tell him, I need him to get ready for community development. Tell him, I've given him a mind, but I've not been able to get all of it out of him because he doesn't have the support that he needs. He said, but tell him, I'm going to touch the mayor, the governor. I'm going to touch senators, congressmen. That's going to start bringing him two, three, four, five, six, seven million dollars of work at a time. Tell him, I'm going to make him the Joseph of Brooklyn and Bronx. Y'all need to, God says, I'm going to show y'all jealous. I just felt a strong spirit of jealousy. God said, they don't know how long you've waited. But God says, he does. Said, I want to trust him with properties. These properties are already purchased, but something's going to happen with the government concerning some type of, I won't say it, illegal activity that's going to make those buildings become confiscated. The government is not going to be able to resell them because that's illegal. They need to come. They need to uh, 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 give them or donate them to somebody that will clean up that area. God says, tell you everywhere the soles of your feet shall trod. Everything your brazo peque toriamansai. Everything your hand shall touch shall work in your favor. In the mighty name of Jesus. All right, at the count of three, 30 seconds, no music. We're closing without it. Just sound. What's your name? Daniel, stand up, brother Daniel. Daniel, are you renting or owning? If I told you that that time was over, would you believe me? God says, he, he said, tell him like this. And do you know him? Very well. Where do you know him from? Because I don't. Okay, I mean, is he a part of your church or part of the fellowship, part of the organization? And what city are you from? Westchester, Illinois. West Illinois. You probably, I had to ask your leader because I'm trying to show some kind of protocol. You're going to get everything that your family should have had. God says, tell him this, and I'm saying it in front of you. With all of what you're doing, God said, tell him he didn't get away from me. Tell him I've been calling him since he was a child. Tell him I've had to go at him several times to bring him back. But tell him this time, not only will I do everything he needs me to do, but I'm going to heal his body too. God says not to make the announcement of what it was because it no longer is. Y'all ain't talking. God said, tell you, go look at the house and it's not in the hood. This is not, this is about three or four miles from where you are. God said, I want to take them to a place of peace. And tell them this house cannot be full of visitors. This shall be your resting place. At the count of three, pilgrim assemblies of the world. Your house is on the tip of your tongue. Don't open it. When that mouth opens, if the person near you is not giving God glory, slowly be wise and get away. And get near someone that turns me to us. You didn't get your money coming here, but you're going to get it on your way back home. You've got 30 seconds.
Hold your neighbor's hand. Bow your heads. And from that, all I keep hearing and I'm done is I hear a sound of an abundance. Abundance has a sound. Dr. Jonathan Nelson, abundance has a sound. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain without a cloud in the sky. I cannot see it, but I can hear it. Hey! You want me to take up a Hold hands, don't let the person go, hold them hostage. It's mine too. Late in the midnight hour. Come on. God's going to turn it around. Finish it, prophesy. It's going to work. And you're gonna get it when? About time I get home. Say that. When will you get it? Why? Because sound trail. Your sound don't need a flight. Your sound don't need a train. Up, semi. And to every pastor, Bishop Murphy, I love you. Dr. Myron Williams, you know I love you can't mention everybody's name but here's the here's the Bashukataka here's the Madioshe here's the closing scripture for pastors bishops businesses ministries that are looking to grow this is what God tells me to quote from the scripture if I quote it and you understand it quickly and activate it I lie not I told you within the month of August you're gonna see growth here is the scripture the Bible says, shout, for the Lord has given us the city. Shout, for the Lord has given us the shout, for the Lord has given us the city belongs to the shouter, to the screamer, to the loudest voice that gives praises unto God. You don't have to shout no more whole hands, but I keep hearing it. Shout for the Lord. Churches is not growing off of preaching. God says, let my sound back in. Let my sound back in. It's not how popular you are no more. People ain't caught up with the hype. It's a sound. Take us back to the storefront praise where people can walk by the church and hear, ho, ho, hey, 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 Shima Hatso. We need to go back there. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back to a hand clapping, foot stomping, tongue talking. Hey, 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 hey. Let them laugh at you, but when you open your bail mail and see balance zero, 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 let them laugh. When you go to the doctor and your blood pressure is 120 under 70 something, don't let them laugh. When you hear the surgery has been canceled because we no longer see what we thought we saw, your voice chased that thing away. Now I told you don't let the hand go, but I understood. You couldn't help it. I used to listen. Go ahead, son. I used to listen to Bishop Brown and them on WTHE 1520 on your AM dial. They were coming on between the time of Landon E. Penn and Bishop Huey Rogers. Yeah, get out of here. I studied preachers before I ever started preaching. 
And you can listen to Pilgrim and hear every genre of music. Yes. From the hymn book mm -hmm. to sacred music. Yes. Then they went to church. Back in the days when they would even let little boy Stanley Brown play up in there. Oh, yeah. But Bishop Brown was known because when you went there, you left full. Because he left no stone unturned. But at the end of it all, he said, we come to bless him. God put us here to praise and magnify his name. And I want y'all to hold that hand, but no more screaming unless you feel it. I will bless the Lord. Y'all ain't got to scream no more. At all times. And his praises. His praise shall continually. You're holding the hand of a debt-free child of God. Yes, you are. 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 Turn that me into they. Come on, find somebody else. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Do either one of you own your property? Yes. You? I'm, I'm going to tell you a secret, but you ain't got to do nothing. You can do whatever you want to do because I trust bishops. But the Lord said, tell him, I could bless him like never before by making someone have so much power, even at your age, that you can transfer your church to another address because the price they're about to offer you is almost, you can't refuse it. <laughs> Never been to your church. I remember people have been there that I know, but God says, tell him, as I'm about to bless him, don't get attached to a building. He said, tell him, I've exhausted him of most of his strength. I want his latter day to be better than his beginning. God said, you can hold on to it as long as you want, but sooner or later, someone's going to sell it. He said, tell him, I'll give him whatever he wants. Tell him now, don't rush until Joshua is fully repaired. Mm. He has to be prepared. Mm. He or she. But they have to be prepared. But God says, tell him, I'm not ready to call him on from exhaustion. I want him to live. I can't come back to Ascoya. I want to the Uski Pata Kapa. I want him to live. Live, my brother, live. Look to Jesus now. No rush, because I understand. As your heads are bowed and eyes are closed, Bishop, will you stand down there, out there? 